Hi, Martin here. Today I'm going to do a wire tuck on my 04 Jeep Grand Cherokee on the passenger side of the engine bay right in here. And what we're getting rid of is this power distribution block. Um, been doing wire tucks on this Jeep. Uh, this is, I think, the, like the third in the series. I started on the uh, engine on the driver's side there and then uh, did the battery tuck put it underneath the back seat and then I did the wire tuck on the driver's side fender got rid of all those wires and I'll show you that here in a second driver's side here as you can see there's obviously no wires running down the side of the fender anymore all the wires have been removed uh, you can see I got small little coils coming up here for uh, your ignition coil and your fuel injectors and actually even some of that I'm not even happy with I'm going to probably reduce some of that when I do the other side of the engine so what we're going to do here is get rid of this power distribution block and all the wires that run on this side of the fender and you know that come up here to this area up in here handle the lights and some sensors cruise control stuff like that and what I got here this is it here is the power distribution block right there from another Jeep and what I did is I grabbed two harnesses this one and then another one so we're taking those two and making one harness because we're going to end up having to lengthen wire all right well let's get started and I'll show you what is all involved in this all right here's half the harness right here And that connector there goes underneath the dash on the passenger side. There's uh, some of the connectors. Those are right by the ECM. One of them does go to the ECM, the black connector. And those three are very close to the ECM. And then you got all the connectors that are going down uh, kind of front. Uh, headlight, cruise control, stuff like that. So we got that part of the harness there. And then I just showed you the power distribution block. This is right there and all the wires right here. Uh, we're talking 47 wires that are going to have to be uh, sliced. I got everything labeled and you got to go through and make some really good notes. So I got every connector, all the colors of the wire, where they go to, and if I've made any changes, you know, what I, uh, how I labeled the wires, which I'm going to show you here. Like right here, you can see I got these little wire markers on here on the wires. That one being 37, and that one's labeled 36, and all of this is notes that I've made on here. If I come down here, start flipping pages, I'm going to find a note that I've made for that particular wire. Most of this is going to be color for color, especially like these heavy gauges, wires, when I go to lengthen it. So I'm just matching up these heavy gauge wires to these heavy gauge wires right here that go to that connector. So Now one of the, the very first thing we've got to do is where I'm relocating this fuse block is underneath the back seat. And what's in the way? Well, the amplifier is. And this is the harness from another vehicle, and we're going to have to let, relocate the amplifier. All right, here underneath the back seat, you got the factory amplifier. This is where we're actually going to end up mounting the fuse block, right in here. So this has got to get moved. Here underneath this seat is the battery. And I did this in a previous video. Uh, got the cover here on it. I'm running a uh, Optima battery in there right now. And I do have a kill switch as well right here, which I also have a video on. Now the battery cable is tucked in this channel right here and then goes up inside the unibody up front. And then when I use this heavier battery cable that I got out of a Dodge Charger, the it comes with another lead on it, like a oh probably an eight or six gauge wire which is tucked in here, which 
we're going to use to supply the power to the uh, distribution block. So some of the first things I'm going to do is take out the back seat, the passenger front seat, and get the, uh, some of this molding out of here because the pathway I got to take that wire from here up to here. It's going to be like under the carpet, uh, hopefully along the rocker panel right in that area there. So I'm going to go ahead and get that all out of the way first. Okay, I went ahead and got the stuff removed. You re remove the amp and the uh, bracket that was in here. And there's a small little bracket right here. That's all been taken off. I pulled back the, the tape off of this harness here for the amp because we're going to need to splice this. Now, I got the fuse box here for this power distribution block. That is going to end up getting mounted right there. I'm going to show you this mount that I'm making for this because this, we've got to get this mounted firmly into place. And I'm going to actually use these two existing studs right here that held the bracket in for the amplifier. And this will be just underneath the seat level once it's in, mounted in here. And then these wires are going to come around here and there's a hole there going into the unibody frame there and that uh, the cabling in there the one is for is the uh, one gauge battery cable heading up for up to the front and there's another small cable in there that's uh, for the battery temp sensor and then I got a pull string in there as well uh, just in case I ever wanted to add any more you know any other power source or any other wiring going up front. Now what I started with was this piece of aluminum I got right here like ten and a half inches long. Uh, you can see I got some scribe lines on it and I drilled a couple holes in it which line up with these two studs. Just like that. Now I'm going to weld some tabs onto here. One right here and here which are going to line up with these two mounting points on the other side of this box right here on this side. So I'll be able to take this box and slide it onto those mounting points and then it'll just sit in here and then of course with the seat over top of it this box won't be able to go anywhere. I cut out some pieces of aluminum. This one here goes right here in that slot. This one here goes in behind. So, you can imagine this being fastened to this right here. So I can just take this box and then slide it onto these points. There'd be two of them, one here, another location right here. Here in the back of the Jeep, I got the what used to be the wheel well where the tire, the spare tire used to be. Well, I did a four inch fuel tank tuck raise the fuel tank four inches so that eliminated putting the spare tire back here but I got somewhat of a trunk space so we're going to move the amp back here I've got a harness all prepared to move up to attach to the where it used to be we're going to splice this section of the harness into the original section so we're just lengthening it now what I got to do is drill a hole through the side of this wheel well right here and put a grommet in there and then we're going to drill another hole into the unibody frame and we're going to use the frame as a path pathway to get to the rest of the harness. Right here you can see the hole I just got done drilling through and now all we got to do is just come right over here and drill another hole into the unibody frame here. All right, got a nice hole right there. Now I'll be able to pass the harness through from point A to B.
Now I ran a fiberglass electrical push rod up here to get that pull string in there and now I'm pulling the cable back into the frame and up to that hole I showed you earlier. All right, with the harness up front, just push that grommet in there. Yeah, I think that looks good. All right, now I got the wiring up to this point here. Now, I, I'm, before I start splicing, you know, the stereo wiring that was here to this section. So what I may plan to do here is take this wiring right here. There's a small gap right down here. I can uh, fish the wire through there, bring it out of this hole right here. Then this wiring out of the same hole, do my splice up here, and then pull the excess wiring either back down into the unibody frame or I could even leave it up in here, you know, just pull it back into this section under here. That'll be fine. I went ahead and removed the front seat. We got to get underneath that little kick plate right there. And that's where the other connector is. Now I got to remove these little uh, panels right here. They simply snap into place. There we go. And then I got to remove this panel here and we can get this carpet pulled back. And then I can feel this uh, and see this uh, like added insulation they put to the uh, carpet or like a padding. Um, I can go ahead and remove some of that so when the harness comes through here the carpet still lays down and looks natural. Okay I went ahead and started removing some of the stuff that we need to get out of the way like the radiator reservoir. Um, I removed what's left of my battery box right here uh, because now the battery is located in the, underneath the back seat so we're able to get this over here and you can see all the wiring right here that we need to move all this is going to disappear and then in the next video uh, in the wire tuck I'll be re removing the TCM or relocating it all this wiring going over the valve cover will be gone and you won't see any of this or this you know all of that's going to be gone in the next video but for now we're going to get rid of all of this and relocate that of course now the next step here is to uh, remove the front fender all right I got the uh, front fender pulled off of there and this is the pathway we're going to take right here as far as the wiring goes it's going to drill the hole right there I'll put a grommet so the wiring everything that services this area you know like the horn the lights like I was saying the AC the cruise control all that all those wires are going to come up around here jump into this channel come through here and then there's a hole right there. Now come out through here, drop down, and then through the firewall and into the cab. I got this uh, bulkhead here detached from the side of the body here. Um, this is the connector that I'm pulling out right now. I've already got it part way up there. But to make room to get it up there, it sure helps if you can detach this from the side of the vehicle. Here's the two locking points that goes on to the clips. The top one is not hard to unlock. This bottom one I fought for like 20 minutes and I finally got it using like a pick like this and getting in there and getting kind of behind it and prying just ever so slightly and then able to pull it off of there. Now I'm ready to pull this on up and get that connector and the rest of the harness out of there. Got it. All right, I got the uh, harness all prepared to go back in. And there's the uh, connector that goes underneath the uh, dash. 
and these are the wire ends that would have went into the fuse block and then these wires I got right here are ones that uh, went in the fuse block as well but they didn't go in uh, they didn't come from this connector okay they went out to like your ECM your lights and all the other stuff out there so these wires here I had to lengthen so you end up with that now what I'm going to do I believe is uh, I'm going to pull this harness back in from the inside of the vehicle so all I got to do is deal with this grommet right here collapse it down that connector <laughs> is really hard to pass through that hole I mean it, it you can do it I mean I've done it several times already but I think it's just easier if I grab this part of the harness and uh, bring it through the from the inside of the cab so hard huh <laughs> all right now that we got the harness in place I'm gonna go ahead and hook this connector up get that bolted into place put this one back on and then we'll get this clip back on to the side here these two wires I got right here those are the gonna be extra circuits just for future and then I got them labeled with wire markers number 11 and I think number 9 and that corresponds with what the uh, fuse box says. So I know where they, what fuse it's located to. I'll just shove those up there. All right, I got the wiring run up here for the stereo amplifier. I'm gonna start by, you know, cutting one pair at a time, matching it up with the other color, and uh, getting this spliced. Get that done, and then we'll start moving on. I got the fuse box set here in place. Um, the wiring looks like it's going to be really close to length and I'll show you what I did I took a little bit of a shortcut with the wiring down here so I gained a few inches that way um, what I also got to do I got a hole drilled through here right now where I placed a grommet in there kind of taking a shortcut Instead of going around this, I'm going to go right through here, come out here, and have the wires then run up across the floor right there. Uh, and I think that's going to give me enough to where I can make these up and don't have to add like a little, you know, couple inch piece in here to get from, let's say, this wire to that wire. Um, and that would kind of suck, you ask me. Okay, I got everything set up here. I got my little alligator clip stand here. I got it fastened down with a C-clamp. And I already did the first one right here. And uh, got my soldering iron soldering station set up right here. And I got it set up a little over 600 degrees. Got crimpers, a couple pair of strippers. And I got a bunch of these. These are like these little sleeves you see here. And see, I do fiber optics for a living. And when we crimp uh, certain types of fiber, well, 
that little piece right there, that little copper sleeve, comes in each fiber connector. And most of the fiber I do, we never use this piece, so I save them. Because for a smaller gauge wire, you can slide a couple pieces of wire in there, crimp it, throw a little spot solder on there, and that is going to be stronger than the wire itself. And by the way, you've probably seen these before, and if you haven't, well, just pretend you never did, because they're junk. Where you slide two wires in there, and then right here is this little soldering sleeve, so when you put heat to it with a heat gun, this melts, and you know, solders your two wires, and then this is your heat shrink, and it's an all-in-one great idea I have had over 50% failures with these sometimes you could see that they work great and other times not so good and you go to pull the wires apart you know check how well it's done and they come right apart they'll break uh, so I would throw these things away I mean I haven't had good luck with them at all I'm going to do it my way, and that way I know that this is not coming apart. Okay, I just got all the soldering done. I got the heat shrink slid on here. Heat shrink this all down. Get some kind of loom put on here. And I think I'm gonna push some of it back down into the unibody, but I think I, I can just lay it down in here as well, in this channel, and it's gonna be just fine. And then uh, we'll start working on the, uh, the bigger part of this project. Okay, now it's time to get these wires soldered together. Now some of these wires are just making the distance from both directions so hopefully I don't have to add a small chunk in there. And now what I'm using are these, that, uh, these splices that you can use for your home outlets where they actually uh, put the grounds all together. These work really nice. Now this works great for these heavy gauge wires. Of course, don't forget to slide a piece of heat shrink on. I got right here. This is a the dual wall heat shrink. It's got the adhesive inside. It's one I would recommend. I'll put links to all these items down below in the description. And also these uh, Thomas and Betts crimpers work really nice. They got the perfect jaw for this. Now technically, that right there in itself would be a pretty good connection, but of course I'm going to solder everything. There we go. This heavy gauge wire, it takes quite a bit of heat uh, to get it to solder, because it's going to transfer all that heat out. Right. And just start doing these one at a time. And uh, before we know it, we'll have it all done. One thing nice about where this soldering point is, it's going to end up right underneath the seat. Nice place to hide what might end up being a bulky part of the uh, harness. You also may want to get yourself a real good pair of strippers like this. They work real well for this heavy gauge and, and smaller wires. With these larger wires all soldered together, and I got the heat shrink shrunk down, I'm going to work on these smaller ones right here before I dive into that other wiring harness this one right here so I got all these with the wire markers on it 
and that simply tells me which uh, fuse that goes to. So if you look at these, and each one of these, there's a number corresponding with that particular fuse. Even though it's labeled, let's say, PCM battery, it's got number 19 on it. So I, by using those wire markers, that just tells me which fuse it's going to. Now, unfortunately, these wires right here are the ones I'm going to be soldering to. It is not long enough to reach the other wires. So I'm going to have to put a small section of wire in here from point A to B. Okay, now with those wires spliced, I can go ahead and splice this other end using these small sleeves like I showed you before. All right, one down. I got nine more to go here. Now that I got that first section of the harness completely soldered, everything shrunk, the heat shrink's all shrunk down, I can start working on this second half of this harness right here. And what I'm gonna do is take care of the four heavier gauge wires. These are all my uh, circuits that I've added to the uh, fuse block there. And then, let's see, it'd be those four right there. So these four wires to those four wires, and then, all I got left are these smaller gauge wires. Okay, I got everything soldered up now. Got everything shrunk down. And I ran a lot of the wires in this uh, factory channel here where there's a, you know, the, all the wiring in here for stereo and whatnot. So I got, I'll get that closed up and then I got the rest of the wire running out here nice and tight to this and I'm pretty sure the carpet's just going to run right over top of this and we shouldn't you know see any bulkiness or anything like that I'll get this closed up Alright, with this part of the harness all installed, there's the end result here. I got just a few wires right there to take care of, and that's uh, for the hydraulic cooling fan. I got a mount of resistor back here because I uninstalled that fan and put an electric fan in some time ago. So to keep the ECM happy, you got to throw a resistor in here. Alright, I'm ready to uh, lay the carpet back down. Okay, I've got all the necessary wires passed through the chassis here. As you can see, they're coming out right here. And I went ahead and then covered it with this, uh, it's a braided split loom. I'll put a link in the description below for this stuff. It does a nice job, looks better than the original split loom with all the little ridges on it. This is a much smoother look. Um, I like it. Now, I have went ahead and took all the connectors off of everything. Um, I think I'll do another video on that, how to unload these connectors. Because they do vary from one connector to another, from one manufacturer to another. And I got it all taped into this harness, ready to pass it through here. And we're going to come out of these two holes right here. This one for the cruise control, this one that's going to handle everything else up here. Now you could run some kind of rod down here coat hanger whatever um, I'm just gonna pass it through here and there's a variety of holes here hopefully it pops out of something and I can just keep it going all right coming out of here there and 
There we go. Using one of these little picks right here and grab a hold of that section of harness for the uh, cruise control. Now this excess wire, we're just going to push it back up in here because the uh, servo is going to mount right in this location right here. Okay, now we just got to get the uh, connector reinstalled and like I was saying before, you want to make good notes or in my case I got a extra pigtail laying around that shows me exactly how to load the connector in what order. Now with the cruise control connector back on, now this is one of the ones I didn't have to lengthen at all and so is the uh, hookup for here for the headlight assembly. I'm able to reroute the headlight wiring so this one here can make the distance. Normally that's not going to happen on a tuck. Generally you're always lengthening things because you're taking a longer route. Uh, reason the cruise control is making it is because we're relocating the servo to this area over here. Uh, I got, I've spliced everything else. I got the, the horn and the driving lights down here spliced through. Those were longer. And then the last one I got left is the, I think it's a low pressure, it might be a high pressure switch for the air conditioning. So I got that wiring right here ready to go. I'm going to splice it on right here and then uh, taking a section from that other harness I had and making this one longer. And as soon as I get that done, all I got to do is reroute um, all of these connectors. I'm going to route them underneath the header panel here to where they need to go. And I got this section up here and then done. Um, other than mounting the uh, servo for the cruise control and getting that hooked up. And then we can get the fender back on. Okay, using those little ferrules that I was showing earlier. For these two, you can make that crimp smaller. You're just squeezing that down, just like that. All right, now after all that's done. All I gotta do is release this loom and let it slide on down. Now that we have everything spliced to the length that we need, we can go ahead and I'm just gonna wrap a little tape around this, bring this loom on down to cover up this little intersection right here that I got going on, and we're ready to get all the rest of these connectors plugged back in. Here's a close-up shot of the bracket in place. Cruise control rate will go right in there and the servo will mount here. Okay, before I put the inner fender liner in, I want to show you up here where the cruise control is, how much room I still had between the cruise and the fender well there. As you can see, plenty of room there. And then to service the cruise control, all I got to do is take the inner fender liner out and I can get to the cruise control and get to my HDMI lights and relay back here with no problem. I will do a more detailed video on the cruise control bracket and the vacuum line. There's something I think I forgot to mention here. This hole I got right here with the grommet as you see 
that is where you know uh, that will be behind the ECM. Now I first explained that I was going to pass the cables through this hole right down here. There's a hole right there, which would came out into here to pass the wires through. And then there's a grommet right back there. You can barely see it. And that grommet is right there. So I was going to have the wires come up from here, go through this grommet, go through that hole to come pat through here. But because I moved the uh, cruise control, well the cable's got to have more of a direct route. So I took a hole saw, put a hole through here, and then put a grommet in there. And this actually shortened up the wire path probably by, you know, maybe seven, eight inches. And I just wanted to point that out before I put the ECM back in here. Now this looks a bit messed up, but it'll get straightened out when I do the next wire tuck. When I take care of all of this and all of that. Here I got the ECM put back in and the one plug plugged in here. Now, what I want to show you here what we're going to end up with the, the next wire tuck. Like right now we got these wires coming up here. Okay, all imagine all of that gone going through that grommet that I showed you just a moment ago and going up in this channel here. So all this is going to be gone, you know, all this. And all you're going to see in the next wire tuck is three of those. Just like that. You, you know, this wire will curl right up behind the ECM just like that. So you have just these three little sections of wire right here going down behind the ECM. I think that's going to look really sharp. All right, let's check out the finished product here. There we go. Now, if you lifted the back seat, you wouldn't know that wasn't stock. Let me come back here. Lift that up. That looks just like it was factory. I think that turned out real nice. And here's the finished product up here. See, that opens up a lot of real estate right there. Now, if you can just imagine um, on the next tuck, the TCM won't be here, and then all of this wiring right here will be gone. And what I want to do is build a custom coolant reservoir made out of aluminum and mount that right up here next to the radiator. And then that will open up that whole corner right there. And I still would like to do something also with the AC lines. I got an idea for moving the dryer and then I'd uh, like to have a custom line made for this as well so it's not like over the valve cover and then I can easily remove the valve cover and it shows it off a little bit more well there we have it that was quite a project for me I mean this Jeep was down for two months of course I didn't work on it every day and I didn't want to, uh, but I'm certainly glad I got it back and running again. I've been driving it now for about two weeks. Everything turned right on, just like it was supposed to again. I didn't have any electrical problems whatsoever, so it all went really well. Uh, I think the key is, you know, you're going to make really good notes. You're going to have what I suggest is get a couple more harnesses instead of messing up the original one grab two more I think I paid like $25 a piece or something like that format pick apart and uh, you take the two to make one and then you always got that original one as a reference you know you can always go back in case you didn't make good notes and you can go oh this wire goes from point A to B you know it goes from here to there and because uh, I did fall back on the original harness for reference and uh, just to make sure when I was putting this all back together that I had it right all right and uh, 
I mean, it really opened up some real estate here. A buddy of mine, Rick, came by the other day to check it out, and he liked it, and he's saying, man, be a great place now for a, a turbo. And since I also opened up the other side, you could do a twin turbo or maybe a Paxton supercharger right here. Uh, you know, it, it opens up some uh, ideas for the future. That's for sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I sure appreciate the thumbs up. That helps out the channel immensely. And I'm also a Amazon affiliate. Please check out the description down below where you'll find links to products and tools that we used in the video. And you can do all your Amazon shopping through one of those links. And then the channel earns a small commission. That really helps out. I appreciate it. And if you never subscribed to me before, please hit that subscribe button right down there and that little bell symbol right next to it. And that way you get notifications the next time I upload a video. Thanks again for watching and we will see you on the next one.